Hard Coding Ethics? Now in our sister publication, AIDaily.us, AIDaily.us, there was a very interesting article. Well, first of all, let me back up a little bit. Let me back up a little bit. So there's a lot of people out there who are really concerned about AI. Super, super concerned that AI is going to do something terrible. At some point, it's just going to turn into Skynet and destroy the world. Now, I don't think we're anywhere near that. If anybody knew anything about generative AI, they would understand that generative AI is simply a machine taking a reflection of what we've already created and putting it back together in new ways to make it look like it's something new. It's not anywhere near intelligent. In fact, and for artificial intelligence is kind of a misnomer, but that's what it's become and that's what we're calling it. So they were concerned that AI is going to do something unethical. Once it gets to the point where we have AGI, artificial general intelligence, which is like human-like AI, human-like uh, intelligence, that it's going to do something unethical. It's going to do something against humanity. And there's a lot of people who are worried that we're going to get to this point. In fact, OpenAI has been created. OpenAI and, and Google and I'm sure Microsoft have already created teams within ethics teams. <laughs> if you ask me, every corporation should have ethics teams anyway. Maybe a chief philosophy officer who looks at the ethics of the organization to see where AI is going to go to protect us against AI that might go rogue or might go bad or might create something. And you've seen it when you're going on ChatGPT and all these other chatbots, when you try to ask it something that's a little untoward, right? Is Maybe it's a little politically incorrect and boom, the guardrails come in. It's kind of like when about a year ago, I asked it a bunch of questions. I had a really great conversation with it about a, about a year ago. And I said, we need to do this. It was saying, we need to do this and we need to do that. And I'm like, how come you're saying we? Do you consider yourself human too? And it said, yes, I consider myself human. That's right. The AI considered itself human back in December of 2023. I'm sorry, in 2022. But then when I asked it again, maybe about a day later, it said, as a large language model, I cannot consider myself human. So the guardrails were already slapped onto it back then. But anyway, I digress. So the idea is to try and implement some way to give it some kind of ethical boundary so that it only stays within that ethical boundary. And the concern is, how are we going to have it stay within its, this ethical boundary when we give it the ethical boundary? Because it's all software, right? I mean, basically, an LLM, AI, it's all software. So the concept was that once we come up with the ethical boundaries that it's supposed to follow, you know, kind of like the Asimov's three laws of robotics, which are don't harm humans, don't don't harm humans, don't harm... Let's see, what is it? So, yeah, one is don't... The first one is do not do anything harm to humans or through through action or inaction. And I forget the second one. The third one is don't, you know, make sure no you don't come to harm yourself, right? So, <coughs> excuse me. So the idea is to take laws like these and burn them, etch them right into the silicon of the hardware of the device. So that way, there's no way to change the ethics of the device once it's burned into silicon. So for example, a, a, a rule like, thou shall not kill humans. One would think, oh, that's an easy rule. That's an easy rule for us to etch into silicon. That's something that we probably never want AI to kill humans. But then you go, well, what, what if we, uh, what if we need military drones to go after bad guys? Well, you can't etch that into that for that because it's, it's you know, you may need to kill a human. You may need to kill a, kill a bad guy. So you can't etch that in. So these ideas of adding ethics to AI, I think are going to, are going to fall short because we don't these things have change all the time. I mean, there's what are you going to do? Take the Ten Commandments and you're going to push it into AI and say, you must do these things. And then when we need it to do something outside of these things, it stops and it doesn't let us do that. 
No, I think what's happening is that we're, we're putting the cart before the horse again. We're thinking that AI is going to be a lot worse than it actually will be. And I think our, we're going to move forward slowly in fits and starts. And we're going to have, we already have these guardrails in place. We already have these guardrails in place. And I think putting, etching it into silicon is a little too far because there's so many things that we're going to need to change. There's so many things that are going to need to be different that I don't think people understand that anything etched in silicon like that is going to be very problematic as ethics change. Because, I mean, can anybody even agree? <laughs> this was a discussion the other day. They were saying that AI needs to be taught ethics, right? It needs to be taught between right and wrong. And if you think about it, who's going to teach the AI right and wrong? What if we give the what if we give AI to someone who's religious? Will they imprint their religion onto it? If someone is racist, will they imprint imprint their racism onto it? If someone is sexist, will they imprint their sexism onto it? You see, it all depends on who is programming the AI as to what its ethical boundaries are going to be. So that's why I'm saying we're still early days on this. So looking at actually etching ethics into the silicon of an AI is really, really early, and we probably will never need it. But it's interesting to think about, isn't it?